Coming up on SA Today, the Syrian refugee crisis comes to the U.S., which governors are trying to prevent entry to their states. Plus, Governor Cuomo is proposing new consequences for drivers who aren't paying their tolls. I'm Josh Bazan, and this is SA Today. Good evening. We start off tonight with one local representative's plans to allow Syrian refugees into the U.S. on the condition that strict screenings take place. John Katko said he supports allowing 10,000 refugees into the U.S. next year, but says the government needs to take the time to improve the screening process. This follows several governors announcing they are opposed to refugees coming to the U.S. This after learning that one of the alleged Paris attackers posed as a refugee to enter Europe. So far, 27 state governors have voiced their concern, but the decision is ultimately made by the federal government. Alabama, Alabama Governor Robert Bentley says he is concerned about the safety of his state. So my heart says that we should let them in, but uh, my head says that I have to protect the people of the state of Alabama and keep them secure. And U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch says the U.S. is working to ensure all refugees are properly inspected. All of our agencies will make every effort to vet every refugee coming into this country. But I would note, however, that we do have the benefit of having that significant and robust screening process in place, a process that Europe has not been able to set up, which renders them much more vulnerable. The Student Association will be sending their letter to the New York State Assembly calling for the ride-sharing service Uber to come to Central New York. The Assembly voted unanimously yesterday for the letter to be sent by the end of the semester. The State Assembly will address the issue when the next legislative begins in January. And SA will be reviewing the university's working group on free speech's recommendations. The report was presented to Chancellor Siverud in September, but was only made available to SA last night. Their deadline to take a stance is set for April 16th. SA President Aisha Sadat will be meeting with SU Athletic Director Mark Coyle over the potential new athletic fee. Sadat wants a $100 fee in place of students purchasing men's basketball and football tickets on their own. SA and Otto's Army work together to draft a proposal for the fee. And joining us now in studio is President Aisha Sadat. Aisha, thank you for being on the show. Of course. We'll get to uh, your meeting with Mark Coyle in just a second, but I want to talk about the, the terrible attacks in Paris that happened over the weekend and how the SU community really sort of gathered together in response to that. So wh what are some of the reactions you've been hearing from students across campus? Um, you know, it was, it was obviously really, really upsetting, and I'm really happy to see the university kind of come together on not one but two different occasions to kind of grieve uh, the losses, now, not only that happened in Paris, but in Lebanon and Russia as well. Um, not only did the Remembrance Scholars host something on Sunday, but then Hendricks Chapel hosted something yesterday as well, and I had an opportunity to be a part of that. So I know that we do actually do have some students from those areas around the world who were attended both events, which was really great, um, but it was a really great time for us to come together and kind of grieve as a community. And there was a vigil held last night. Uh, were you able to attend that? And yes, you, yes. What, 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 was it, what was it like? What was it? Um, so I actually participated in some prayers as well. Um, so Hendricks Chapel, one of the chaplains, had reached out to me Sunday evening asking if we wanted to be able to participate. Um, and I said, of course. Um, it, was, it was really amazing. I mean, you know, we had two days to really plan, and I sent out a message to the student body Monday morning. Um, but, you know, it was 40 degrees outside, and not only did the, the crowd stay there, but it got bigger over the course of the entire ceremony, the entire vigil. Um, it was really, really amazing. Uh, on, on a bit of a lighter note, you're meeting with SU Athletic Director Mark Coyle scheduled for tomorrow. Um, what are you hoping that will come out of this meeting? Um, so I've created kind of a draft proposal what a student athletic fee would look like at Syracuse University based on research that was done, based on um, comparing us to other schools in the ACC, and then also looking at the proposal that the president before me, Boris Gressley, created. Um, I'm hoping, I, I created a whole a new proposal, I'm hoping to pr present that to him, and I've given him a couple days to review it, but I'm hoping to get some more feedback on it so when I bring it to the Board of Trustees in December, I can have something more concrete and hopefully with his backing on it as well. That's awesome. We'll, we'll certainly be following that 
And I want to ask you one last question about Joe Biden. Uh, <laughs> Vice President visited campus last week and you were able to be on stage with him. So what was that event like and his message to campus? What, what was your reaction to that? It was incredible. I mean, you know, granted, I and a lot of people have asked me, I found out when the entire student body found out that meeting, that, that email that Chancellor Subaru had sent out that Friday before. Um, it was incredible. And I know that a lot of students really appreciated him to kind of take the time out of his day to end his, his tour with It's On Us at Syracuse University to talk about this really important topic that we know that he was extremely passionate about. And he spoke about it for almost a half hour. Um, so I know a lot of students really appreciated it. Now it's kind of, it's on us to kind of continue that conversation to further it for the rest of our time at Syracuse. Certainly. Aisha, thank yeah. you so much for being on the show. Of course. For more essay news, you can follow us on Twitter at essay underscore today. Taking a look at the Syracuse University quad cam atop Maxwell Hall, we're seeing mostly clear skies right now and it feels like 45 degrees outside. With winds coming in from the north around 10 miles per hour, I'll have a look at the week ahead in just a few minutes. Gary Thibodeau's fate is in the hands of a judge to decide if the conviction of a 1994 kidnapping should be overturned. Thibodeau's lawyer says new evidence implicates three other men and the evidence would have resulted in, the, in an acquittal in the original case. Thibodeau was prosecuted for the disappearance of Heidi Allen, who was kidnapped at her job at D&W in April of 1994 and is presumed dead. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is proposing a bill that targets repeat violators of toll payments and fees. Under the proposal, the DMV would suspend registration for drivers who fail to pay five tolls or charges from other violations. It would also affect those who ignore repeated notices from the state. And the digital age is taking over. Starting today, GEICO will be the first company approved by New York State to issue individual e-cards. Those e-cards are part of GEICO's smartphone app and can be used to provide proof of insurance during a traffic stop and even before a judge. Ten more insurance companies are following suit and have applied for e-card status within the state. A hearing is set for November 25th for the daily fantasy sports website FanDuel. The site has said they're suspending entries in the state of New York, but they believe the restriction will be temporary. This comes after an announcement by a judge to not grant a restraining order against New York's Attorney General. And when we come back, Hershey is changing up its chocolate recipe. Find out what ingredient they're substituting. Plus, Porsche is saying they're not responsible for Paul Walker's death, who they're blaming instead. Watch Citrus TV Noticias at 3 p.m. every Sunday on the Orange Television Network. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. We're going to take another quick look at current conditions right now. It's just over 40 degrees. You've got partly cloudy skies. The wind's coming in right around 10 miles per hour from the east. Tonight, looking ahead, we're going to have a low in the mid-30s. Uh, mostly clear skies, though. That's going to be nice. The wind's going to pick up a little bit from 10 to 15 miles per hour. As for tomorrow, it's going to be a pretty, pretty nice day. Mix of sun and clouds, high in the high 50s. Uh, winds 
coming in a little bit more today at 15 to 25 miles per hour, but check that out. You could have gusts up to 40 miles per hour, so just be aware of that. Looking ahead at the five-day forecast, a rain system is going to come in from Wednesday night, early Thursday, so expect a few showers on Thursday. After that, a cold front is going to work its way in Friday into the area. It's going to bring temperatures down Friday and Saturday. As for the weekend, could see a few snow showers over the weekend. Doctors are trying to keep the number of deaths to a minimum following attacks in Paris over the weekend, and the people of France are helping out. Four times the number of blood donations made their way to centers. So far, 129 people died in the initial attacks, and the supply of blood has re remained at normal levels despite the huge demand. Volunteer firefighter Pr Patrick Hardison finally has a new face. One of the most extens extensive face transplants took place grafting the front and back of the neck, ears, and eyes. The firefighter was burned in a fire back in 2001, and he underwent 70 surgeries since then. Now he'll be taking meds to make sure his body will not reject the new face. Hershey's Chocolate will now be adding real vanilla to their chocolate kisses and bars, replacing the artificial ingredient that used to give the chocolates their vanilla flavor. The candy company announcement is part of their plans to use simpler ingredients. The products will be on store shelves soon, and the new packaging will say natural flavor. Lactose is also being removed from the chocolates. And Apple is planning to open a 100% solar-powered store in Singapore. The Singapore-based Sunseep Group agreed to provide solar power to Apple starting in January. The company will use solar systems atop more than 800 buildings in Singapore to power the store. Apple says that 100% of its U.S. operations and 87% of its operations worldwide are powered with renewable energy. That's as of 2014. The season to shop is upon us, and consumers have wasted no time. The National Retail Federation says more than half of the holiday shoppers are already starting to buy gifts. But don't worry if you haven't started yet, there's still time to shop. And if you're looking for toys, the Adobe Digital Index says the best time to buy is on the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Charlie Sheen announced today he was diagnosed with HIV about four years ago. The diagnosis came after Sheen suffered what he believed to be a series of migraines. As for why he waited to make the announcement, Sheen says those he trusted with the secret were extorting him for more than $1 million. Portia is claiming they are not responsible for actor Paul Walker's death. According to court documents, the accident back in 2013 was Walker's own fault due to alterations made to the vehicle, and the L.A. County Sheriff's Office ruled driving too fast caused the fail crash. We'll be right back. I'm Jay Billis of ESPN. You're watching Citrus 